About a year ago, Apple released their 5K iMac and it made a pretty big splash in the market. At that point, 4K displays were just starting to get adopted and to get a display that's almost twice the resolution of 4K was pretty crazy. Not only that, the 5K iMac did a great job at video editing. At that time, I had a 6-core Mac Pro with the best graphics available and I tested it against this new iMac and it lost in almost all of the tests. That was crazy, the iMac did such a great job it was shocking to me. Now the only downside that I found is that if you're pushing the CPU to 100% for an extended period of time or the GPU, it actually has to slow itself down to keep itself from overheating. That's because of the thin design and the powerful parts that are inside. So that fact kept some people from purchasing this new computer. Now if you're just doing video editing, some standard stuff, you wouldn't experience that. Uh, but if you're really pushing it to the limit, that was going to happen. Now, about a week ago, Apple just released the newer version of this. This is the late 2015 version of the 5K iMac. They updated some of the parts, added some new features, it has a new operating system. But the main question that came to my mind when I saw it is, is it going to be overheating? So this is the question I'm answering in this video. Let's take a look at the first test. The first test we're looking at is Unigen Heaven. This is a benchmark that pushes the GPU to 100% and tests how well it performs. Last year's iMac got up to 98 degrees on the graphics card by the end of the test. That's really hot. Looking at the CPU, 65 degrees, that's just fine. And the fan RPM is right about halfway. Looking at the new iMac, the fan stays all the way at idle completely through the test. The CPU is 12 degrees cooler and the graphics card is 10 degrees cooler. That's definitely a good improvement. I went ahead and ran the benchmark four more times consecutively for a total of five runs without any pauses. Now you see the graphics card did get hotter between 96 to 98 degrees, but the fan was almost at idle the whole time. It would actually go between 1250 and 1400 to keep it right at that temperature. So there is no graphics card throttling or slowing down, but it does run fairly hot. My next question was, what if I take control of the fan speed myself? Is it gonna run cooler? Because the last test, when I ran five tests consecutively, it was almost at idle. The fan was basically silent. So I went ahead and I put the fan at maximum speed. 2850 RPM. Looking at the results, you're getting 40 degrees Celsius on the CPU and 66 degrees on the graphics card. Now there really is no reason for it to run that cool. You're not going to get any extra life out of your computer by running it that cool. And that fan at full blast is quite loud. So the next thing I did is I lowered it down to 2000, which is right in the middle. And at 2000 RPM, you could still game using the iMac speakers. The fan noise is not going to overpower uh, the music and sound from your games. So you guys see the results just a little bit hotter on the CPU, 46 degrees and 75 degrees on the GPU. That is great. Um, what I would actually do is maybe even lower it to 1800 if you're going to be doing any kind of gaming. Maybe even 1700 and your GPU and CPU temps are going to be just fine. I'm definitely happy with the results. Even if you don't touch the fan speed at all, the graphics card is not gonna overheat. It's gonna make sure it keeps it under that 100 degree mark. For me, it's a little bit hot, even though it's not gonna make a difference, it's not gonna be slowing down. So I would suggest to kick up the fan a little bit, even maybe to 1500 or 1600, if you're gonna be doing any type of gaming or something that's gonna push your graphics card to 100%. So looking at just this, I'm definitely happy that we solved one problem. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the results of the CPU test. The test that I ran is converting H.265 files to ProRes. Now this pushes the CPU to 100%. Looking at the chart, you can see that at idle, the CPU runs slightly cooler. At about the one minute mark, you'll notice that both of the computers are about the same temperatures. But interestingly, the new iMac is actually running the fan at 1800 RPM already instead of 1200, which is the idle, the lowest setting. At the three minute mark, the older version would ramp up to 2000 RPM, but you see the CPU would get up to 95 degrees Celsius. The new iMac would be at 2700 already, that's the maximum the older one would get, and it's at 89 degrees, so the temperature hasn't really changed. At the 5 minute mark, the iMac stays relatively the same, the older version. 
The newer one actually cools the CPU down a little bit. We're at 87 degrees now and the fan slowed down slightly. So very interesting. 10 minute mark, the older iMac would already be going full blast and you see there's already some thermal throttling going on. It's at 97 degrees and the computer slowed down from 4 gigahertz to 3.8. The new iMac is at 2850 and it's at 90 degrees right now. It's after 10 minutes of 100% CPU usage. Interestingly enough, the new iMac's fan goes slightly faster than the old version. At the 15 minute mark, the old one would slow down the fan slightly. It'd be at 96 degrees and the CPU would start going faster once again. The newer iMac would be at 2550, so it slowed down the fan more as well, but it's at 88 degrees Celsius, so definitely cooler. At 15 minutes and 30 seconds, the old iMac would be at 2700 RPM and at 100 degrees, and the CPU would go down considerably to 3.3 gigahertz. Very interesting, the new iMac would be at 2650 and still 89 degrees, so if you see the temperature is staying relative right there, at 20 minutes, the old iMac would be going full blast on the fan, 97 degrees Celsius, and it'd be running at the slow speed of 3.4 gigahertz. The new iMac, on the other hand, 2700 as well, and it's at 87 degrees, so 10 degrees cooler. If we look at the older chip, you see it only slows down when it gets to about 100 degrees. This new iMac doesn't get to that spot ever. It stays between 87 and 90 degrees when you're doing 100% CPU for a long time, which is perfect. I'm very happy that it does not slow down on the graphics card or the CPU. You could see that Apple included a new fan with the new iMac. It goes a little bit faster, but not only that, it actually ramps up the speed earlier. Apple loves to have quiet hardware, so they'd rather have hotter hardware that's quieter than the opposite way around. I guess they learned their lesson with the last generation one, so this one, it does kick in the fan earlier, but it keeps them from overheating, and overall, it doesn't get too hot, which I'm really happy about. The next thing I'll be testing is how this new iMac performs to the older one in regards to video editing. I'll be testing both Final Cut and Premiere Pro, so if you want to see that video, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on that. If you want to see what's been updated to this new computer, I have a link in the video description, which is an article that I wrote, and it's just a very simple laid out uh, explanation on what's new and what's been updated and what changes they have made, so you guys could check that out. And if you want to know the optimal recommendation for a 5K iMac so you don't spend too little and not get the performance and you don't overspend, I have a couple links in the video description as well to the model that I would buy and the RAM that I would buy. So you guys make sure to check that out. It's the same exact model that you guys see here. Thank you guys for watching. If this video has been helpful to you, definitely give me a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, you guys can ask that in the video description below. And if you would think this video would help somebody else make a decision, definitely send them a link. You guys can share that video. So I will see you guys in the next one.